How's it going folks? It's Rob and Jack here and today we're going to run through our new aquaponics system. This is our second new build. This one is up here on the deck and we'll be planting out some herbs in this one, maybe some salad greens and we'll be tweaking it down the line. We'll be adding a mint barrel and also a soil bed behind me here but today I thought I'd run through how it's currently set up and the tweaks that I'm going to do to it just to get it run the way I like them. So this little system here is a little balcony system, a 200 litre fish tank, 70 litre grow bed, and it's been kitted out with a little flood and drain system over there that we'll look at. They're actually quite popular here in Australia. I've seen a number of them come up second hand. I don't know what that says, but yeah, it's definitely gonna suit our purpose here. Uh, John was actually running it as a hydroponic system uh, when I picked it up. And there will be, as I mentioned, a few adaptions. I'm putting a soil bed on there and a little mint bucket like Terry's made for his system, um, just over the other side, just in front of Bob there. Uh, a little bit later on. Now this one here at the moment, uh, the way I bought it, uh, this plumbing down here is slightly different. Uh, John basically had it set up to feed off to a couple of rails, hydroponic rails that he was growing using the hucho pucks in. And I've made a few ad adjustments so I can plumb up another line that will come up there, cross here to the soil bed and also tee out to the mint as well. I've just added a little master valve there so I can isolate it for the time being. Now underneath the bed, Oh, that is just connected via a little 13 millimeter barb into a 20 mil. Um, so that's a half inch to a three quarter inch bar, uh, barbed fittings. And it runs on through to a fountain head. And that's what distributes the water into the grow bed. I might have to get one of my um, poly risers from downstairs just to extend it a little bit higher. We'll just see how it goes. And over here, John popped in this little flood and drain uh, bell siphon. This isn't the original bell that goes on it. Um, I've actually lost it downstairs. So this is just something similar to give you an idea. And inside we have a um, standpipe. Oh, by the way, John is using a end cap down the bottom here with some screws in it. Where are we? Uh, just some screws to hold it in place, stainless steel ones of course, and it's got a bulkhead fitting, a one inch to a three quarter inch or 25 to 20 mil reducer, and that is sending the water out to, just pop all this back on, well, the bell siphon drain below the bed, does that get your sniff of approval? Yes, it certainly does. Uh, this is something that John was playing around with. He's, you'll notice that little hole there, and that was because this was right next to a neighbor's window and he didn't want to disturb them. Uh, so yeah, he's just a little bit of a snorkel hole to help the bell siphon break. And then he had the pipe going down into the water itself. So I'm gonna play around with that, see uh, how it works, because that is something a few people have pointed out to me in the past that they would like to make the system run a little bit more silent. So anyway, that is pretty much all how it is set up at the moment. Now, the pump in there is that, not John's, that's actually mine. It's basically the same model as the one that John was using, except this one has a float in the back. So that's the only difference in it. Other than that, it's a little sun sun pump. Uh, basically, if it pumps dry, uh, that will turn the pump off. Now these grow beds, Typically should have some form of filtration to pick up the solids waste just to get it out of the system. I'm not going to worry about it personally because what I can do here is once a year come in, give it a bit of a muck around and then get the water to the mucky water to drain off somewhere else and then we should be right to go. There's not going to be a lot of fish in here. I'm probably going to have maybe 15 to 20 little rainbow fish, native Australian rainbow fish in there. So there's not going to be a huge massive solids load in there. So that's enough of how it's set up. I'll give you a bit of a look now and how I'd like to set it up. So first off, we'll look at the changes I've made to the plumbing, namely the actual bell siphon itself. Uh, the shroud, the shroud has been changed mainly because I need a little bit extra height. So we're going to take this one out. Another adjustment I've also done is just talking about the shroud is the cap that goes over the top. Now these guys here, when they go on, they can be fairly tight. So what I like to do is just chop out a few little sections around the rim. So that means that the cap goes on fairly smoothly. There's a couple of little bits of a rim from the cap here that you can use, put your fingers on to pull it off. And it's a lot easier for smaller fingers and kids and elderly people to do it than um, one of these guys pushed on nice and firmly. So that's one of the first changes I've made. On the guard itself, I've had to grab a slightly larger one because I'm using a slightly larger bell. I thought I'd go with a clear see-through one just so people can see how the bell siphons work. And because it's taller, I needed a taller shroud. Obviously this one is far too short. 
So I've just resurrected one from an older build. It's got some slits cut in the side and I also had to match up these holes down the bottom in the end cap that holds the shroud in place. That was fairly easy. All I had to do is zap through a couple of screws in the base just to hold it in place. Then I matched up the holes by drilling through the existing holes in the end cap there. And I decided to add another row of holes as well, just to allow water smoother entry when it starts to drain towards the bottom. Now suppose what we should do now is take this little doohickey out and take this out first. If my lovely assistant could help me. Thank you very much, Bianca. Can I say hello, Bianca? Hello, Bianca. So I just take these out. That was very cliche, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. Meh, it's all right. It's all right. So just taking this little tank or bulkhead fitting off and I will be replacing it with an o-ring on a valve or faucet socket. I mix the two up all the time and that goes on the inside of our little um, base plate here. Let's screw that in, that's nice and firm. And then we'll pop our little washer on here. Make sure that's seated nicely and then place that down through the hole in the floor. And then underneath we'll grab our 90 degree elbow. If I can have my lovely assistants back again. All right. Ready? And that will just screw on underneath. And those washers on the top will create the watertight seal. Now we have a simple one inch pipe that we can just push in there and that will direct the water down with that little 45 degree fitting onto the water surface itself. And we'll play around with the silencer later on, I think. Just thought I should explain why I have swapped from the tank or bulkhead fitting to the PVC. Uh, firstly, the cost, the valve socket, the um, valve adapter, the tank fitting or bulkhead fitting, and this little elbow down the bottom there come out at $15.19 at my cheap online supplier that I buy from. Now this little PVC jobby, we have basically the uh, valve adapter and a threaded 90 degree elbow and a little reducer up the top there to take the 20 mil pipe. That comes out at $5.11. So I'm saving over $10 just there. Not only that, you can probably tell, I've tried to line them up sort of level where they would sit on the bottom of the tank. This one here with the straight two fittings sits a lot higher, which means I can have more water in the tank because once water goes over the top of your pipe, you have problems with bell siphons initiating. So I thought I should just briefly explain that to you so you understand why I've swapped over. Then for a stand pipe, and because this is a one inch fitting, what I'll be doing is putting a little um, one inch to three quarter inch reducer, so 25 mil to 20 reducer on the end of a pipe. And then that goes in there like that. And then door siphon over the top. And then we can put our shroud in. And I don't know if you can make it out, but I've got three marks there and three marks on the pipe there. And I can just match them up nicely. If my assistant could please pass me the drill and the screw bits. So I do have three holes down here for screws, but I'm not going to worry about all three. This is basically just to stop people from pulling out the uh, shroud, which can be a bit of a problem. And then we'll make sure this is going to go the right way. There we go. And that'll hold it firmly in place. And then we put our end cap on top and we're pretty much all finished there. Now the bell siphon how-to and also the canister filter how-to are both modules on our backyard aquaponics beginners guide. There is a link down in the description, 1995 US, and there might be a uh, little code scrolling across the screen right now. If you're lucky, if you want a couple of bob off, there's over four hours worth of video plus PDF downloads in the guide. Plus you can ask for my advice if you need a bit of a hand. And you can also check out our shop. The link is also down in the description for a couple of aquaponics goodies as well as the awesome Queensland Nutbuster Macadamia Nutcracker. That's enough of me spruiking trying to pay the bills. Back to the episode. Now for the pump. So this fitting here came with the system. I'm not going to change it much. Uh, all I'm going to do is just connect this 13 mil line to the pipe underneath. Uh, give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. We're on there nice and tight now. Up the top here, I'm not happy with the level of this water. It will be coming into the bed way lower than I like. So I found another fitting that John threw in that should do the trick. It's just a little elbow that slots down in there. And that should give us more than enough height to get the water just to dribble out there. Might actually face it this way, hey? Dribble out there and above the level of the clay. So I think we're pretty much well right, Bianca to fill this up with some clay 
and also some water. Okay. First of all, we'll put it into position. There we go. Before we put the water in, I thought I'd show you this. This is ascorbic acid, basically vitamin C. And what it does is it neutralizes chlorine and chloramine from your town water. So when I dump in the media and water from our other system, um, it won't be killing off the bacteria. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. It's roughly round about a teaspoon per 200 liters or 50, 55 gallons, uh, but it all depends on how much chlorine and chloramine is in your water. So don't take that as gospel. Now just turn on the hose and we will let that fill. It's probably gonna take quite a while while we dump in the clay. Before we add the clay, Bianca and I are just gonna nip on downstairs and grab some bacteria laden media and water from our existing system just to help kickstart the cycling process. So first bucket. It's probably rather loud. There's the first bucket. Second bucket. And I think on top of that, we will put our seed clay from the system. Dig a bit of a hole in the center for this stuff. And it even comes with some roots. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be a couple of worms and worm eggs in there as well. Now our last lot of clay. Make sure she goes all the way around. And I think we might have just enough. If we need any more, I'll grab it later from downstairs. So while the system is filling with water, I'm just going to nip downstairs and get some veggies to transplant up here. Rightio, I am just going to stop the water there because I just realized I really need to put some sort of a limiter on the um, inflow there. So it's going to be really easy to do. All I need to do is cut the line here with some scissors, move the pump out a bit and pop this in. So here's a selection of plants I've got from the other system. A couple of um, green onions we harvested the other day, they've already started to shoot. And a couple I've just harvested for tonight's meal and a little bit of oregano or oregano. So they're green onions, I might pop along the back here. They've got a fair bit of root mass on them as well. And that is Jack being jealous that he's not allowed on the deck because he keeps knocking stuff. Poor Jack. This one down here, I think. These guys can be growing fairly close together. On there. Whoops, better turn the water off too while we're at it. So there we go. Smooth that out. And we might put the oregano, pop that clay in there. Might pop this oregano over in this front corner, I think. There we go. Now we can turn the pump on and hope it's gonna work because I didn't try it out before I brought it up. So here we go, folks. So I've got another one of the adapters that came with um, the system. I'm just going to bring that over to the corner and point it down. And I'll see how happy I am with this little delivery system. And yeah, if it doesn't work too well, well down the line, we can swap it out. Now, moment of the truth, is the pump gonna work? Yes, the pump is working. That is obviously too much water for the grow bed to handle. Let's take that cap off so we can see when it cycles. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing is just popping this little thing on here. It's basically two 90 degree elbows over the top because this, the other water will be used up by the other beds that are put on eventually. And I can just open this up. There we go, even that on full throttle, that is pretty cool. And I can just use this to aerate the system. And I believe a siphon has just initiated because the water has just gotten very cloudy. So that'll just be all the dust in the leftover clay. There we go, we'll pop this in here. We can direct that down so it doesn't make a lot of noise. But as you can see, the water's still coming through. So I'm just gonna add some of the seed water from the current aquaponic system. And hopefully we won't have an overflow. So I'm just adding in a little bit of fish emulsion into the grow bed. It'll make the water a little bit cloudy. I'm not too worried about that. But more importantly, it'll provide nutrients for the bacteria on the media that we brought in from the other system and from the other system water. And that will start the nitrogen cycle initiating in this system here. And yeah, there's a whole video on that down in the description. You can look at that one uh, on the guide as well. So once that nitrogen cycle is complete, we can add fish in there and we'll be on the grow. So we'll cover that in a later video when we add them in. 
I have noticed down here on the top, the clay is getting rather damp close to the top. So I might have to nick off a centimeter or two from that standpipe. But other than that, I think we're pretty much well done here. So folks, it's the next day and the water has cleaned up a little bit. And we were having a few issues with the bell siphon, but I just fiddled around with those little valves down there and got the flow right and we're pretty much all traveling along nicely. I stuck the camera there and did a time uh, for it before and I think it's um, cycling, filling and draining in just under five minutes. As for the uh, fish emulsion that I put in there, I'll give you a bit of a look, we'll pop that down there. We do have some ammonia in there. Just change hands so I'm not casting a shadow but I think we have roughly round about oh, one part per million in there of ammonia. As for the nitrite, I don't really see any nitrite in there as yet, but you know, that's understandable. And the um, nitrate, we definitely have a load in there. As for why there's so much uh, nitrate in there, I'm, yeah, uh, it could be due to that small amount of fish emulsion. I doubt it very much. It could be due to this media, most of it coming from another system. So there could be nitrate left on that and also to the um, bucket load of media from our system downstairs. But over, overall, I'm pretty impressed with that. And like I said, I will be cycling this before I add any fish in. So due to the high nitrate level we have in the system, come on Jack, uh, I decided to um, scatter some seeds over the top of the grow bed. There's some lettuce that we saved from the other aquaponic system when one of the plants went to flower. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll germinate fairly well and we'll be able to pop out here onto the balcony or deck and pick a lettuce harvest when we want some. Calm down, boy. So yeah, fingers crossed they should do okay. Now, I will be doing updates when we add on the flow through wicking bed and also the little uh, mint bucket to the other end of the system. That'll be coming in a couple of weeks time. And of course, I'll bring you along when we add the fish in. So before I go, a huge thanks to you wonderful people who come along every week and say good day down in the comment section. And also thumb up the videos and share them around. It really does help us out. Also, you awesome folks who have purchased a copy of our online guide and the others that are supporting us through the YouTube members and Farm Your Own Yard website. We really do appreciate the support. Links for all of them down below. But I'm being eaten here, so better go. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics are booming and I will catch you next vid. Cheers, folks, and have a top one. Apparently humans on the menu this weekend. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, you little rat bag.